Okay. So here we are. Oh, we're, like I said, we, when you do these um, exploration flights, they start you off in the air. I mean, you're already in flight. Um, yeah, so we're going to start off by giving you all of the, the flight um, so statistics. Um, there at the lower right hand corner, sorry, lower left hand corner of the screen. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. Let's start exploring. Okay. Um, shoot. So as I said before, on, well, you guys can hear. Oh look, they, they're starting us off at Mount uh, Rosa. This is the highest point in Switzerland. Um, and man, is it beautiful. But as I was saying on a stream, Oh, the Fulton. Um, you guys couldn't hear it because the audio got messed up on that one. But um, so that's the Garner Glacier. But anyway, so I was saying with these updates that they're doing on the flight simulator, you can really see the difference. I mean, the detail is extremely good. Amazing to fly the airplanes. And I'm not I'm not really sure what I prefer flying in the cockpit or out of the cockpit. Um, but as you can see, it is really detailed here in the cockpit. They do a really good job. They give you good um, detailed models of the planes both on the exterior exterior and the interior now my plane looks like it's kind of listing listing to the left here Going straight up a little not sure what's going on there we're in the crosswind but I'll give you detailed um, instrument panel panel and everything and they've updated the Garmin I think we're getting a crosswind blowing us to the left a little. But I love the B-Craft, by the way. I think this is the same plane. Um, they give you in the Brazil uh, exploration flight when you're in Rio de Janeiro. And man, I really do love this plane. It's an amazing plane. It's very agile, very nimble. It's very responsive to throttle control and input. If I were ever to buy a small plane in real life, I would probably get this one. I have to say though, for exploring this type of territory or this type of terrain, I would probably prefer to have something like the x -Cub. Or something with pontoons, if you know what I mean. Like, is that a dam? I don't think that's a dam flight. We should go check that out if we can. But, um, so, as I'm saying, yeah, it's a dam lake. Uh, a lake that has been dammed. So, what I'm trying to say is that I much prefer to have a plane with pontoons, um, but I'm not sure if that plane can really get up over the mountains. Yeah, there may be issues with uh, flying that type of plane in this terrain, but it's, it's like we could land on the lake if we had that plane. And um, unfortunately, we can't do that in this plane. So that's why I would prefer to Xcode or something like that. Something like that. But man, is it beautiful. 
know what? Maybe they don't want you to land out here. It's pretty rocky. Um, I'm sure there's an airport around here. There's a small city over there. So wow. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Almost photorealistic. I can tell this is not real. Something about the lighting just isn't right. Now you know what? Maybe that's just my perspective as someone. You know, what I'm trying to say is uh, maybe this is more photorealistic than I my eye can recognize. Uh, because when you're place where the sun, you're at high altitude and the sun is like it is today, or the lighting from the sun, it does tend to wash out a lot of the color of things on the ground, um, and especially through a camera lens. So to me, I would say this is fairly photorealistic through a camera lens. But to the naked eye, the color should be deeper, and the blacker should be black to me, and the whites maybe not so washed out, with the light colors. So I don't know, just a little observation I'm making here. But overall, this is very impressive. I mean, we're flying, we're, we're doing this flight simulator on an Xbox. Uh, this is a video game uh, console. And as you can see, we have real dynamic, well, this game has real dynamic weather, weather patterns, and I believe winds, like crosswinds and stuff. You see how the plane is bouncing up and down? I'm not doing that. We're literally flying through um, the natural, uh, I want to say it, the weather dynamics. Uh, I really want to get down in one of these valleys and explore what's down there. I want to know what is down there. Fly through the valleys. Follow the river if there's one down there. I think there is. Um, just see what's going on. So, uh, you know, this isn't like Grand Theft Auto where I can land and get out and walk around. But Microsoft, if you're ever watching this video, which I doubt you will be, there's not really anyone watching my videos right now. But if you ever see this video, maybe you have to think about making an option where we can land the plane, we can have an avatar, get out and walk around these cities because us, I'm used to down there. I would really like to go down there land my plane maybe in this field and then go explore loose the, the actual city and maybe you could make the geography the topography of the city real at least the downtown areas uh, points of interest and we could go explore let's say loose has a museum and you know we could go explore the loose museum the new cultural town or cultural town or something. You know, they're, they're historical locations. Maybe we could go check those out as, as uh, flight simulators or flight simulator players, flight simulator explorers. And maybe it's a way to get people interested in tourism in these areas. I mean, you're really spending a lot of money making these very detailed uh, maps and locations for us to explore from the air, maybe you ought to give us the opportunity to land and explore from the ground. Um, this is, you know, my cockpit view. That mountain is amazing. These mountains are amazing. You know, I live in the U.S. and the Northwest. Get mountain distance also. 
but this is very weird. I don't know I don't know if you can see that. Xbox Series X is what I'm playing this one. It's not perfect. I can see some graphical glitches. Uh, the mountains are literally kind of moving, glitching out as we're flying over them. And I think that's because they're not true. 3D models, what you're seeing is the bitmaps or the detailed, it's like a skin on top of the mountain, and you're seeing that kind of shifting with our perspective. For some reason, um, you know, they chose to give us like this weird shifting perspective. I noticed it with the trees and the Foaten, and I mentioned it, but again, you can't, you didn't get to hear that because you didn't get to hear my voice recording but yeah and to Fullerton I noticed the same thing with the trees when you land in the ocean the ocean is amazing detail I love the water um, the way they, the water is represented and the way the graphics represent you know are represented for water uh, but I'm gonna kind of take a dive into this valley but, I do not, I mean, I'm not saying it's horrible, but the trees uh, were kind of shifting from perspective as I went around the trees were shifting. You see the mountains in front of us kind of shifting? When you're really uh, changing your, your perspective on the mountains, they're kind of morphing and shifting around you. It's, it's a weird thing to see. But that's not to be negative on the game. This is an amazing, or uh, the simulator. This is amazing on the Xbox uh, Series X. I, mean, I can't express that enough. I think Microsoft and Mobisol, I can't, I don't remember how they pronounced the developer's name. But the, the developers have done an amazing job. And to get this to play, well, well not in these uh, exploration exploration flights, but um, you can have real world weather patterns and everything. You know, if it's raining in China, I mean, or Japan, and we fly in Japan, you're getting the real weather patterns. I just think that's amazing. Now, of course, you need to be, you have to be connected up to the internet to get that experience. Of course, they can't all that. And on this game, there's no way they can predict the weather. But yeah, still amazing. Look at this. This is just jaw dropping. Towns, the cities, the roads, the topography is representative of what it will look like if you were really here. Now the buildings are not necessarily accurate. You, know, you, know, you probably won't be on the streets of this city and see the exact same buildings, the same color and everything. That's that's understandable. Could they be that detailed? But the river being there, this road being there, the trees maybe aren't exactly where they are, but the roads and everything is gener generally um, what you would see if you were here. I said, so like I was saying, the 
ground structures are a representation of what you would see in real life. They're not necessarily what Back this way. We came from, oh, there's an airport. Should I land? I'm going to try to land. Get back in the cockpit. I might be too close to land. I'm going too fast. around the, the city we can get out get in the car drive around the city go visit uh, points of interest maybe we could even go drive to a lake out in the mountains someplace and fish and microsoft uh, osobo or whatever your company call is called you have an amazing IP on your hands if you could do that. I would pay so much money. I would invest in in it heavily if I could do that. If I could fly this plane to any location in the world, get out, go fishing in the middle of the Alps, oh my goodness. That would be an experience beyond explanation, especially on the home console. I mean, Come on, PC or home console, that would be amazing. I mean, look at this place. It's just that, look at that river. There's two rivers coming together. There's one coming down the mountain, and there's one over there to the left. See? I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. Microsoft, please do this. You have to. Why wouldn't you? Maybe that's in your plane. So I have the power yet. But if you can do Forza, I've been playing Forza 5, or Forza Horizon 4, I think, not 5, Forza Horizon 4, Forza, Forza Horizon 4, I've been playing. Um, and let me tell you, you can drive around here, the map is extremely detailed. You can't really get out your car and walk around Grand Theft Auto style, but it's right on a verge. I mean, you can drive anywhere. It's amazing to, to look at, just like this flight simulator. So, I don't know. If you're out there listening, my Microsoft. Okay, we're gonna throttle down a little. So, I don't, another thing I wanna talk about. I don't have a whole toss. I'm not a hotel whole toss flyer. And the reason is not because I don't want a whole toss. I actually bought the um what do you call it? Oh, looking down. I actually bought uh, we want to put our flaps down. Not too high again, I think. I actually bought the Make one more round. I'm gonna try it one more time. I gotta, go. I gotta. I have to go out a little bit further. And again, I'm talking over my own speech. I apologize. But I have to go out a little bit further. I'm 
coming in a little bit lower as I'm approaching. This is this plane. Um, it's a fairly fast moving plane, which I like. It's not like, let's say, an X-Cub, but it's a slow moving plane. And it looks like we're moving slow, but we're actually going pretty fast for a plane of this, this size. I mean, I, I've got the plane and it's throttled all the way up. But this plane actually moves fairly fast. And um, I have the flaps down. I should probably put my landing gear down. This one time, I forgot. I was so busy talking, I didn't put the landing flap, the landing gear down. Um, but yeah, a plane like this. I'm going to put the flaps down. Too. A plane like this uh, moves fairly quickly. It's a, it's a fast-moving, agile plane compared to an X Cub, which is a slow. I mean, it's slow and stable. So it's agile in the sense that because it's smooth, it can move very nicely at slow speeds. Um, this plane moves very nicely at fast speeds. Um, you know, if you're talking about what's the difference between the planes. Oops. See what I mean? Like you have to be going at a high speed in order to keep the altitude. In the X-Cub, I could go really slow and make a really sharp turn here, and the plane would maintain its altitude. It's meant for slow, low to the ground, um, sightseeing basically, and exploring. And you can land it anywhere. On that river down there, on the highway down there, you name it. So I like to do my landings in the cockpit. I'm gonna try to land, line myself up here, and I like to do it this way. It's just better for me. I'm still not lined up, and we're moving fast for a plane of this size, and that's why it's hard. That's a short runway. Trying to get myself in line with the runway. I'm too busy talking. So we got our flaps down. And 500. We're at about 500 feet. I'm throttled down all the way. I got my flaps down, my landing gear down. I think I'm about to throttle up a little bit because, again, this plane has to be at high speed uh, we don't want to pile drive ourselves into the earth either so here is where I should really start throttling down coming down we're going to nose down and pull up and hopefully we can touch down okay brakes I think X is the brake so, speaking of X being the break, that's another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Touchdown here, by the way. Um, so, I don't have a whole toss. Um, let me take the brakes off. Did I take the brakes off? Let's see. No, I don't think I did. Okay, there we go. throttle down now as I was saying oh look there's some airport truck going over there but um as I was trying to say I don't have a whole toss so for me let's get off the runway I thought maybe there was a taxiway further down here but my first time at this airport and I don't know but that looks like the end of the runway and I don't want to go off the end of the runway mm -hmm. whoa excuse me sorry about that so I don't have a whole toss I need one I would like one 
I guess I don't need it. I'm doing okay with the Xbox controller. But it's a little bit difficult to know where the controls are when you're in flight. Um, I just feel like it would be nicer to have a whole toss. Um, but I, I do pretty good with the Xbox controller. So this is a very small airport. I think these are the parking spots for the airplanes. So you would literally park in this spot over here. Maybe that's, uh, you would just sit there on the taxiway waiting for, um, you know, approval for your flight uh, by the tower. So, anyway. Yep. Pretty cool. Now, again, this probably is not an exact reputation of this airport, but gives you an idea of what it looks like here. So, I'm not going to spend too much time here at o Aosta, but I am going to go over here. Oh, look, there's a nice uh, private jet over there. Oh, no, that's a prop plane. But here, looks like it's a refueling station. Of course, that would be neat, too, if we could stop and refuel. But we can't. So let's just go over here. Yeah, looks like a refueling station. It's a nice hangar. It would be nice if we could hang our plane. There's your ground crew, crew and a the minivan. There is your tower. We're going to get back out here and taxi down to the end of the runway. Now you're supposed to look left to make sure no one's coming. And we would stop here. No one's coming. And we would uh, throttle up a little here. Oh, look, there's more ground crew. So, I don't know, I don't think we need that much runway to get this plane off the ground, but I'm going to go down here to the end of the taxiway. So, actually, I think we're going the opposite way, by the way, too. I think we're supposed to um, go down to the other end. This is where we want to go. Again, I've never been here. And I'm probably doing a really bad job. I think these are parking spots, but again, not my airport. Um, I don't know. Their line markers are a little bit different here. So I'm just going to, I probably should have went down to the end of the runaway and uh, made this turn onto the airfield. We're going to line up here in a minute and hopefully we have enough runway. I don't think we do, but no, this is a small plane. We should get off the ground pretty well here. So we're going to line up. Stop. Okay, now we're gonna put the brake on. We're gonna throttle up. Well, see, now that time the brake wasn't on. I thought the brake wasn't. Okay, we 
we're trying to stay on the line here. Get up to speed. We'll slightly pull back on the stick. And lift off. Whoa, whoa, okay. See Xbox control. Oh, Don't we're going sink. back down. Oh, maybe we should put Don't that sink. Don't oh, sink. Don't sink. Don't know. sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. Okay, we're gonna get our speed and altitude up. Sorry about that again. Using the Xbox controller here, so it's a little bit difficult for me. Don't to... sink. Don't sink. Oh, do I still have my flaps? Don't sink. Don't sink. Naturally uh, gaining altitude somehow. I turned my flaps off during that takeoff. It wasn't the controller, it was me. Pilot error. To go over to that dam if I can find my way back and that would be another great idea somehow being able to explore the map prior to flying and put your own pins uh, with your GPS and then fly to those locations being able to maybe be in the cockpit explore the terrain on the GPS Put your marker down like you would in a car or you know, using a normal GPS. And then um, use the GPS to guide you there. This that would be awesome. Maybe I would want to go visit some location. I want to make sure I get there. Well, to me, it would be awesome. So, right now, we are flying back to, I think it's. I don't know, for the high speed, I can't remember what that was called. Um, Montes, something, I don't know, we'll see when we get there. Then I might do a loop and come back, but I flap something. You know, maybe at this altitude, this plane needs these flaps down. Because immediately when I put those flaps up, the plane starts to, it has like three different, yeah, the plane starts to sink. But, I uh, guess we'll keep it up at this time. Now, it's been my experience, you can make this plane crash pretty quickly, pretty easily. Doing a little bit of like that, aileron, or I mean tail flap, you could make this plane crash pretty easily. So just be aware of that, and um, modulate that tail rudder. Now, I think the dam is over this mountain peak. Um, probably should be gaining some height to get over there. Oh, that's one mistake um, at this point. Um, even if you don't have the throttle modulated properly, like generally, you don't want to 
to have. Like right now, I have my throttle all the way at max. Generally, see where I just throttle down a little bit? That's where you would want to be. Let's keep the plane at a good, maybe a little bit further than that. Depending on your altitude. Keep the plane. Oh no. So, like a jet plane, you would want to keep throttle down to keep it at a good thing. But every plane is a little different. And this plane, let's say if I was in an X Cub, because they're both prop planes. Um, X Cub, I couldn't keep it throttled up like this. It would literally climb until you go into a, a steep um, stall. It would climb and go into a stall. Uh, this plane, I have it all the way throttled up. And uh, wow, look at that breakover. I actually lost altitude breaking over that mountain. Kind of losing its, its ability to maintain the altitude. I don't know if that's a glitch. I think that's where the dam was. I don't know. But um, I was going to say this plane, I have it throttled all the way up and it's maintaining a nice level uh, flying altitude. It's not climbing to the point of a stall, which I really like. Uh, but again, it'd probably be a waste of fuel flying a real plane to have it throttle that high. I want to do that in real life. And I'm flying into these, this valley here. I may be getting myself into a little bit of trouble because I don't know if I'm going to fly enough. But I'm staying low because I'm hoping we can see the dam and come up, come up over it at a low altitude so we can really see the detail of the, 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 the dam. Sorry, I can't talk because I'm looking at the mountain closing in on us. Yeah, I think I'm kind of getting myself in trouble here. Maybe gain some altitude. But this is beautiful. Yeah, we definitely want to try to gain some altitude to get over this. Uh, Give myself a little bit of climb here. Throttled up all the way as far as I can go to try to get over this peak. Because the plane isn't climbing fast enough. Now, if we were in the cockpit, this would be very scary. Um, let's do it. See how close we are to the mountains? I mean, it's beautiful. But that's, you know, in a plane. You don't want to be that close to any object. So let's get out of here so you can see. But yeah, beautiful. I mean, I wouldn't want to fly. I mean, you can fly that close to stationary objects, but it can be dangerous. Anything could happen. I could come up over the mountain ridge, hit by, get hit by a crosswind, and then a small plane like this, it could flip the plane over. And, like, you know, there's a lot of uh, crosswinds and strong cross crosswinds to sort of crazy. And I could be slammed into the side of the mountain, up at that altitude. If I could get help, if there's any radio, you want to call over the radio. It would take them quite a while. Or if I even had the opportunity to radio. Because see how I'm kind of pitched in a steep pitch there? The wind could hit the tip. The wind hit the tip of the and any small thing. And it could happen anywhere. It could happen at the ground level too. You know, like a low altitude ocean flight path. But the wind could hit me here, flip the plane over, I'd be in the side of the mountain before. So, it's important to just keep that in mind if you were ever going to be really flying a plane. 
Enthusiast, but I am a huge um, fan of aircraft and flying. And if I had the time, it must be realistic money, uh, I would be flying. And I probably would buy one of these B craft. I think these are amazing. Or the next car. I don't think I would be flying commercial. Maybe I could do it as a business. Um, a citation, if I were to get a jet plane. But even very wealthy people don't really own airplanes. They're generally owning uh, those planes. Uh, so there's a group of people that'll get together and they'll purchase a plane. And um, think of it as a business or as a um, timeshare. Generally speak, speaking, um, there's very few people that own their own plane. And it's a very expensive proposition. It's a very expensive hobby. And even with a group of very wealthy people, it can uh, be overwhelming to own your own probably not if you're a person who owns your own plane you're probably very rarely using it for leisure it's probably something you're going to be using as a business proposition or you're going to be um so it's probably something you're using for business or you might use it once or twice a year to make a short uh, hop from, let's say, Colorado to California or something like that. It, a very short trip. You probably would not use this plane to fly from, you could use it to fly from California, you know, Los Angeles, California, or somewhere out in Santa Monica, San, Santa Monica um, to, let's say, upstate New York or Maine. You could do that. But, um, it would be a very expensive trip, and I'm not sure you could do it for cheaper than a commercial airline. And, we are losing altitude naturally here, this is interesting. Uh, maybe we're not losing altitude, maybe the terrain is rising. Oh wow, look at that. We got really kind of nice. Should I try to fly between the blades? That'd be cool. Probably gonna get whacked up there. And so far, we've been flying around this terrain for a little while, and I've been flying around other maps and exploring other areas, and I have to say, I don't think there's any limit to the world. I mean, I can literally fly from, the other day I flew from Florida and the Typhoon. from Florida. Oops, excuse me. Again. Burpee today. But I flew from Florida all the way to Boston. I didn't land. That's very long and gorgeous flight. But I was just saying, you could do it. It was it was pretty cool. We crossed the 
Atlantic, sail to Europe, sail down to Moscow. Maybe I'll do that on the stream one day. Oh look, it's a... Uh, oh, I should try to land here. It's a, um, a grass airfield. We're going to try to land here. That's one of the things I like doing in the place in here. I like landing at lots of different airports just to see if I can do it. Here, I'm not sure if the plane's not maintaining altitude because of the air, the density of the air, because that's a thing. Or if it's because of the terrain is moving. You know, I'm flying over terrain that's gradually Getting higher, or the altitude is I'm losing altitude because the terrain is coming up at me as I'm flying. Uh, you know, it's not flat, is what I'm saying. Like here, there's a hill. Um, that might be the case. It's not that the plane isn't maintaining its altitude, it's just that the terrain is at, uh, accurately represented as I fly over the altitude. Of the Come back. <clears throat> I'm gonna circle around. Um, before I forget, I should probably put my landing gear down, put my flaps down. Flaps down. Then we're gonna come back around. Where did I see that? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Again, I'll try to do this for the cockpit. trees oh she we're gonna crash we're gonna crash we're gonna crash oh crap we're gonna crash <laughs> we, we almost crashed but we saved it it's a dirt field I don't think it matters which way I land at it or come at it from but I'm gonna circle around again. What the heck? Why? We're losing altitude badly. Maybe flaps up? Did I mess up the trick? We're at 16,000 feet, but we're actually not at 16,000 feet because we're literally about 800 feet above the ground. Just visually looking at this. Um, it says we're at, and that's what I mean about the terrain coming up underneath us. We're flying over the terrain and it literally Terrain is at like 17,000 feet. I have to be at 20,000 feet or higher. Now we're at 20,000 feet. It still looks like this is about 800 feet. Um, clearance is probably less. Okay, we're gonna switch to cockpit. Okay, I still have my landing gear. 500. 
See, 500 feet. And I'm literally trying to climb higher. But we're flying over our constantly changing terrain. But hey, that's true to life. That's what the you would experience if you were flying out here. So I'm going to come around. We're going to make a left. Uh, we're going to try to approach this from the right. It's difficult because we got this really steep mountain over here. But I'm going to fly as close as I can to that mountain without hitting it. This, we know I can leave flight. Uh, Co-pilot, go away. And I apologize, everyone. I have a tendency to keep my camera kind of tilted out the right-hand side instead of straight on. I don't know why. I don't like looking over the cowl. Okay, so I can see. But I'm not sure we're very close to it. And I'm gonna throw it down here. So we've got a, like a serious amount of height here. And we're gonna try to come into this air field. I think I'm too high now. Okay. Here we go. I think I throttled down too much. Hopefully, we get over those trees. I'm gonna just hit it at the river. Okay, coming down. A tree. Why did we put a tree there at the end of the runway? Okay, coming down. Pulling up. Hopefully, you touch down. Oh, break, 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 break. No, not enough runway. Right into the water. I'm breaking. I swear I'm breaking. Okay, can we get out of this? Or are we going to float down river? Oh, shoot. Are we literally floating now? Are we literally floating? Are we a boat now? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's, uh oh. <laughs> is, is this how you're supposed to land? Okay. Now I got my brakes on. The brakes finally took. Oh, throttle down. Throttle down. How do I get back out of the river now? Wow, guys. That's amazing I didn't crash. But what's going to happen here is I'm going to throttle back up. And we're going to take off again. And try to go explore some more. So let's put the brakes back on. Okay, let's throttle up. Am I too close to that tree? We're going to find out. Okay, we're going to take the brake off. And that was a field landing for you. Very scary, very touchy. And let's see if we can get a field takeoff. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. That is scary. <laughs> Just go the trees. Oh boy. That was. So, lesson for all you new pilots out there, keep your landing gear down when you're going to land and make sure, well, not keep, make sure you have your landing gear down and make sure you have your flaps down. 
I still have my flaps down. Let's see. Is it just gonna be nothing? I don't think so. Spoiler alert, I see a bunch of points of interest out there, so probably something amazing over there. We're gonna cut it hit it close to the bridge so it's like this dramatic thing. speak. I don't know how to read these names. I'm sorry. Typical American. Unable to speak. Other people's languages. Oh. Where did those Christmas tree things go? Maybe it was just a glitch in the, the Matrix. Not the Matrix, but you know what I mean. And uh, the graphics, because I do not see those Christmas tree things anywhere now. like the water effects um, the way the lighter the, the way the light reflects or refracts off of the surface of the water I think um, Sobo and Microsoft did an extremely good job with representing bodies of water in this flight scene. Those boats? Those are boats. Yep. That's a marine. To me. To me. So, I think you could literally just keep flying. Eventually, we would just reach another country. I think we may have, because the names are starting to sound a little bit 
Italian? I think we're in Switzerland. Those names put under two closely trees. Cut off a little bit. Like the three Christmas tree things. I'm gonna head toward them and I'm not gonna stop looking at them to see if they disappear. You no. Know, oh, they disappeared. Okay, graphical glitch. So, the simulator is amazing, but not perfect. They're still popping and pop out everywhere. I don't know why I keep seeing the, the mountain peaks out there, but um, yeah, there they are. Okay, up here we have Campo Volo, Volci Della. So I think we are probably in Italy now. These, these names are sounding very Italian. So if that's a thing. I don't know, again, American, I'm not in rural geography, it's not that great, and I won't say American, because maybe Europeans don't know, you know, what state is next to um, Colorado or something, so, or if you cross over into Canada from the U.S., what cities are right across the border, I know those things, you may not know those things. So for me, you know, I'm just trying to say, not ragging on Americans. I am American. Proud to be. Here's another airstrip. We are gonna travel. simulator I mean. Where is the airstrip? Oh, that is the airstrip. Well, we're not going to land on that, are we? Which way do I land? 500. Guys, that is the airstrip. Well, we might have to end this one. Top of the building. Oh, we're gonna have to throttle off a bit. Uh oh, we're gonna crash. We're gonna crash. Okay. Throttling down. Flops down. Flaps down. Brakes on. We're gonna go right into the traffic here. Uh, why aren't we stopping? Okay, touchdown. We made it. I think we're in Italy. We came over from the Swiss Alps. We're right next to the highway. Those are real cars. The people are probably like, what the heck is this guy doing? Landing his plane right on the highway. Must be an American. Ha! <laughs> no, just kidding. But when you're on the down surface level, when you're on a surface level, then graphics don't look so impressive. Let's throttle back up.
collision detection between the aircraft and the cars. Which is good. That means I can drive down the highway. Oh, nope. Do not take off. We are not taking off. Wow. So if you can find some open flat terrain, you can fly around like you can really uh, just, uh, you know, fly around. I mean, not fly around, drive around. Okay. Well, I think this is the end of the video, guys. Um, thank you for viewing again. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to the channel, the Gamers Vlog, to you know explore the world of the flight simulator with me. Really appreciate that. If you're liking the videos, if you'd like to see more of this content, please, please hit the like button and subscribe. And uh, we'll be back again next week with another video exploring Microsoft's flight simulator on the Xbox Series X, seeing how far we can push it with the graphical comparison, you know, well, I don't have the PC version, but just seeing how far we can push it, join this amazing world that they've built for us here, um, flying as many different uh, airplanes as possible, and yeah, I'm really excited about this, it's so far been a great game, a uh, great simulator, um, I hope you've been enjoying the videos, so again, if you have been Hit that like button and subscribe. That'll help me get um, more viewers and hopefully um, a little bit more support from YouTube and maybe even from you guys if you'd like to. And then I could create more content like this, maybe a little bit better, get uh, more amazing stuff to show you. Yeah. So again, thanks for watching. Until next time. If you're gaming, make sure you're doing it for the fun of playing video games. Take care. Peace out.